Hello friends and thanks so much for joining me today and uh, this is the third episode um, on the topic of scriptural imagery. Scriptural imagery. And uh, today we're going to focus a little bit on the scriptural imagery of metaphor. And, um, and so many of the parables uh, use metaphorical language to draw a parallel to give an image of an aspect of the kingdom of God. And so, um, so Jesus was always using parables and he was always using parables to explain the kingdom of God. And it, remember, uh, last time I talked about this principle, the kingdom is like principle. And so um, today we're going to take a look at the parable of the wheat and the tares. Um, some of our Bibles may call that the wheat. Uh, in the weeds or the parable of the weeds and so um, as I said before Matthew 13 probably has more parables in it than any other chapter in the Bible and so turn with me to Matthew chapter 13 and we're going to start in verse 24 and talk about the parable of the wheat and the tares or the parable of the weeds and um, and so something that we want to look for in the parable is um, the story behind the story. And so, you know, um, every time Jesus speaks, we have to be attentive to see if there's more to the story than the obvious. And so, um, so anyhow, it's uh, obvious here Jesus is talking about uh, talking in parable, using parabolic language, and one of the tools of parables is metaphor. And so, uh, in Matthew 13, verse 24, it starts out, and this is in the New uh, International Version, it says, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like, and so there's that principle, kingdom is like principle. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed or planted, that the term sowed, S-O-W-E-D, is just a, an old form of the uh, uh, for planting. And so um, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? And he said, An enemy did this. The servants asked him, did you, Do you want us to go and pull them up? And he said, no, because while you're pulling the weeds up, you may also root up the wheat with them, but let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, what time? The harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. And so, um, so here's a metaphorical story about a, a, a farmer who planted seed, he thought he planted good seed, he knew he planted good seed to grow wheat, but somehow uh, an enemy came and sowed um, bad seed in amongst the good seed. And, um, and so later on, the disciples didn't quite understand the metaphor that Jesus was using, and so they asked him to explain the metaphor. Do you stick around to find out what the metaphor is about? Um, you know, there are many people that heard Jesus teaching and using metaphors, and they might have scratched their head and said, "Well, oh, I don't get, I don't get that," and they left. And um, the key for us is, it, you know, it's clear that the disciples did not always understand the metaphor. They didn't always understand the parable. As a matter of fact, it appears that most of the time they didn't. That's not the problem. The real issue is, is do you care enough to stick around and find out what is meant by the parable? And so that's what, that's what separates the wheat from the chaff uh, for those who are listening to Jesus. And so the disciples didn't get it, but they didn't leave it at that. They went back and asked him to explain it to them. And so if you drop down to verse 36 in, in Matthew 13, verse 36, it says, then he left the crowd and went to the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. 
And so now he's going to clarify what the metaphor was and give you a clear understanding. The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. That's one of the titles for Jesus, the son of man. He was the son of man and also the son of God. The field is the world. All right, pretty clear. And the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvesters are the end of it. Uh, the harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. Notice the term age. If you have a King James Bible, that may actually say world, which is actually not a good translation. Um, you know, in the uh, King James, you'll have three words that are translated world. One is cosmos, which means the general order of things, uh, the arrangement of, of the world. That's cosmos, which is sometimes translated world. Also, uh, oikomene is translated world in, in the Greek um, word oikomene, which means like the civilized world or the Roman Empire. And then the other word, which is properly translated here as age, is aeon. And so he said the, har the harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. And so an age is a defined period of time. It has a beginning and an end. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who uh, do evil. They will throw them into a fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and then the righteous, the righteous will shine like the sun, in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. And so again, here again, he uses that phrase, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. That is to say, if you truly have a desire to understand, hear. And, um, and so uh, also, the harvest is the end of the age. What age would he be talking about here? He's talking about the old covenant age. And throughout the scriptures, you'll see in the New Testament the, the phrase, the end of the age, end of the world, or uh, the last day, or the last hour, the last days. All of these things are referring to the end of the age of the law of Moses. And so, um, so let's read through the um, explanation again and look at this. The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, and the good seeds... Uh, stands for the sons of the kingdom. And so it's a representation of the sons of the kingdom, those who receive the word of Christ. The weeds are the, are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. And if you go on your own and look at the end of uh, Matthew chapter 25, it uses very similar terminology. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin, and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. And so the age that he's referring to here is the Mosaic age that was coming to an end. Jesus is talking about the harvesting at the end of that age by the angels, where they separate the wheat from the weeds. The angels separate the wheat from the weeds, and then the weeds are uh, bundled up and thrown into, fire, into the fire where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. If you do a search, if you have a good Bible app where you can do a search, search gnashing of teeth. Every place where you see gnashing of teeth, it's almost always um, pointing forward to the day when the end of the age came and the Roman armies attacked Jerusalem and defeated Jerusalem and tore down the temple. Um, hey guys, thanks so much for listening today. You know, sharing the gospel, teaching and preaching and revealing the mysteries of the kingdom of God are absolutely my passion. And this YouTube channel is just one more resource that we have to freely share the gospel across the world and do our part to make disciples of all nations without regard to time, location, or money. And so the content that I share on here is not what you would typically get in a Sunday morning church service, but rather it's a fearless deep dive into serious biblical issues without regard to popularity or denominational position. 
And so if you like this material, please click on the red subscribe button below and you'll get notified when I put new content on the channel. Additionally, please feel free to share this on your social media platforms or through an email link. And uh, if you would like to reach me, please use the email address below. And for more information, please go to www.unitedwithchrist.org.